I would like to talk about uh, the work we've been doing with um, with Christian and with other <laughs> man in Mexico. Um, it's a network approach to the study of swarms, and I will present some of the achievements, limitations, and new directions in, in this approach, which <coughs> uh, tries to capture some of the characteristics, some of the dynamical aspects of uh, the dynamics of the dynamics in, in these kind of systems, uh, groups of organisms moving together. And as you will see, this approach will allow us to separate the dynamic interaction rule from the topology of the system. And this is one of the main achievements that uh, uh, we, we have here. Well, everything was started by this guy, you already know him, uh, in the model. Also, uh, the model is not, uh, is, 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 is not very detailed, and probably the interactions, and uh, Ian said, may be different. Uh, we do believe that there are these universality classes in which the details of the interaction uh, don't matter, and probably, Many, many of these biological systems will belong to the universality class of the Vichy model, but we will have to see that. And the network approach will allow us to, uh, to test this idea that universality classes will apply to, to, to a broad range of systems. Well, <coughs> just let me emphasize that in this model, the particles are represented by the positions and by the velocities, which here are represented as complex numbers. So each particle has a position and a velocity, and you already know how the, dynam the, the dynamics are implemented in the system. The direction of the nth particle time t plus one is the angle of the average velocity within, of the particles within a neighborhood plus a noise. And, <clears throat> and this is one of the interaction rules that we do not know if it is biologically relevant, or if it is just a model that we invented, or that the dictate invented, each particle in the system receives a clear input signal, which is this contribution is the average velocity within the velocity, but then the particle decides to do something else, and we represent this something else as a noise that we add to this, to this angle. And you know this noise is a random variable uh, <coughs> uh, between zero and two pi, so that uh, to the average direction of motion we add a cone of possibilities in which the particle can move. So we update all the particle velocities at a given time according to this rule, and then we update all the positions of the particles following this kinematic equation. And in order to to measure the amount of order in the system, we define the order parameter, and the order parameter is just the average velocity of the entire system, average over time. So we, you can see here that there is intermittent behavior and a lot of fluctuations, but the system reaches a steady state. In terms of this order parameter, it reaches a steady state. The red line is this temporal average of the instantaneous order parameter, and this state state is not an equilibrium state because numerical simulations show that the detail balance, balance condition is not satisfied, even if the system has reached the steady state. Well, <coughs> so Lipschitz found uh, numerically a phase transition that seems to be of second order continuous. And these are the original figures that appear in the Lipschitz paper. And by increasing the size of the system, this curve seems to approach to a discontinuous to a, I'm sorry, to a continuous phase transition, and they say that, well, close to the phase transition, the, the other parameter goes to zero, some power of, of the difference between the critical noise and, and the actual and the actual noise. But these are numerical experiments, these are numerical simulations. There is no theory to, to corroborate these curves. So, <clears throat> 10 years after that, uh, this paper came out in Physical Review Letters, written by Gregoire uh, and Chate. And they <coughs> claim that the phase transition is always discontinuous, including the minimum model of Lipschitz. And there is a difference, you know, 
between the continuous phase transition and the discontinuous phase transition. Everything changes, the correlations, the susceptibility, the heat capacity. I mean, all the properties of the system are quite different. Hysteresis. Um, hysteresis as well. From the physicist, it is important to know if this transition is continuous or discontinuous. And from the biologist, too, because if we, are, if we want to understand how this collective order emerges, the physical mechanisms behind the second order phase transition, or the biological mechanisms, or the interaction rules behind the second order phase transition, are quite different from, uh, from, from those mechanisms in the first order phase transition. So we want to know what are the interactions between these animals, and we want to know if the phase transition is continuous or discontinuous, uh, because that will reflect how the, how the animals are interacting among them. Well, here, Rewan and Chate cheated a little bit. They change the way in which the noise is introduced into the system. Instead of adding the noise outside an function, they put inside an function. So, and they said, well, this is, okay, this is a, this is a change, but we hope that this, this doesn't have uh, strong consequences in the phase transition. But here, the, the interaction rule, the biological or the physical interaction rule is changing because now we, we know exactly the decision mechanism of the particles is the angle function, but then the particles receive a blurred signal. So it's like they, they cannot see the, the environment very well, and, and they receive a signal from the neighbors, but with some noise, because probably the environment is blurred. But once they have received this signal, they deterministically know what to do. This innocent step of introducing the noise into the angle function involves quite different interaction rules between the particles. And with this, everything is the same, except that now to the average velocity, we add a random vector, which can be anywhere uh, in this circle, and then the particle moves in, in the average of the resulting vector. And with that innocent change, they found a continuous, discontinuous phase transition, as it is shown here. This is for the original big shift model, and this is for the Chatea model, and they say that, well, this is clearly a discontinuous phase transition, and they say that the big shift transition is also discontinuous, but it doesn't look like because of finite size effects. So, uh, but for an infinite system, um, this curve eventually becomes like this other one. So far, they have only numerical uh, numerical results, numerical experiments. So, uh, the why should they have a numerical phase transition that seems to be of first order? And then the question emerges there is this controversy that Big Shake claims that the phase transition is continuous, and Chate claims that it is discontinuous. By analyzing the nature of this phase transition in experiments, we could have some insight uh, into the the interaction group of, of the elements. So <clears throat> Christian and I and some colleagues developed uh, this network approach that, and I am talking about this controversy because I want to illustrate the, the, the usefulness of the network approach, the power of this approach. 